doing him well. All right, Matthew, enlighten us on supplemental data capture. Yeah, so this is kind of totally different gear here. So this is with the regular registration flow, you're wanting to collect additional information, whether it's name information or registration information um, uh, or UDF information. Uh, you can get that uh, with a supplemental data, data capture page. So example, so um, uh, t-shirt size, which Karen was showing on the Express Reg, and really with Express Reg, you're kind of, you you can ask supplemental data on it because you you put whatever on an Express Reg page. But uh, yeah, this, this adds to the regular signup page, if you will, you know, you, the signup page, you're asking your core data information, but now you're in specific courses and you want to get different things. And a supplemental data capture page, one thing about it is you can use it on multiple courses. Uh, so if you have an I agree to the terms and conditions, uh, you know, capture box, you want to get that, that captured, um, and you want to put that across all of your, your courses, you're creating one page and and it can be reused then on every single page that or every single course that requires uh, you to do that. Uh, but other things you can ask for, you know, meal preference. Um, so if you've got a conference and you're wanting to make sure, um, you know, the people are getting gluten free or or vegan uh, options, you can, you can do that. Uh, birth date, age group, that type of stuff. Uh, birth date. I mean, you can ask that on the personal data capture. So if th this would be, if you don't ask on the regular uh, sign up page, you can add add this to the supplemental data capture. Um, creating it. So the same custom folder that you would put express registrations, um, express registration forms. Uh, it's the same custom folder that you would get, uh, put your data capture page in, and there should be an example in your current uh, setup called data capture.htm. And I, it has like 10 different things on it, um, you know, like the the t-shirt example um, and um, oh, some, some of the UDFs and things like that. Uh, so you, you're not starting from scratch. Uh, if it is missing from your custom folder or you don't have access to it, um, a lot of you guys are probably going to be creating these pages on your machine and then handing it off to your IT, de IT department to put on your web server and put into the custom folder for you. Um, so you can download that da data capture.htm from our website um, and also you know, email your technician if you can't find it or or something, um, uh, and we can get you a link to it. Uh, make a copy. The thing is, kind of, I, uh, Karen mentioned it. You know, she reuses her her Express pages quite a bit, but the the kind of the programming law is to rip off and replicate. So don't start from scratch. Grab an existing example bastardize it to do what you want it to do. Uh, that's kind of the uh, programming law. So uh, you're not starting from scratch, make a copy uh, and do, when you're naming these, name it something relevant. So if you're just asking t-shirt size, SD t-shirt size uh, where SD stands for supplemental data, supplemental data, uh, then you can, uh, realize later on in life, hey, that was for a t-shirt size. Oh, I need to use that for this conference coming up. You know, whatever you need to to uh, help you remember, because, hey, if you just call it, well, uh, Karen was calling her C0231, whatever. I'm not going to realize what those are numbers are for. Um, now, for her, those have a very specific meaning to her. But for me, coming in fresh, I'm looking at those numbers and I'm like, whatever. Uh, 
there is one rule or kind of two rules here with the naming convention. Do not use the course code or the grouping code. Those have um, uh, specific conventions. Um, so don't don't name it those. Um, otherwise, they're, you're going to mess up some other things in AceWeb. And yeah, I think I've harped on the custom folders where things need to end up. So yeah, it, and if you've got multiple interfaces, make sure it's the custom folder of the interface that you're needing uh, this in. Uh, similar to the express registration page is you are setting this, the name of the template on the data capture page on the template. I don't know if you can see my mouse here, data capture page on, on student manager on the ACE web info tab. So in this example, unlimited.html uh, is, is what I'm using here. Um, yeah, so put that there. So this is where you would put, if you wanna use this on multiple courses, however many courses you wanna use it for, uh, put, it, put it on all of those courses. Uh, if you would like, Get with your technician if you do have something, you know, like a terms and conditions thing that you need to have applied to all of your courses. Get with your technician. We could get you, uh, um, get with you and get a script put together to put that page on all of your courses rather than you going through and uh, putting them in each and every course that, that uh, is needing it. Uh, save you a little bit of time there. All right, so we kind of have two different modes with supplemental data capture pages. And one is into the enrollment cart itself. So right below the fees, it'll show the uh, additional registration information and have whatever your data capture page is asking for. So in this example, there's a t-shirt size and meal preference. Um, and and so this option is called ECDC. Not in, I know it's, yeah, enrollment cart data capture. Uh, so the, but in your INIs, it's called the ECDC um, in there. So if you turn that, now I got to remember which is which, EC, ECDC to on, that's the first choice. ECDC to off is the second in which it actually, so you are on the enrollment cart, you choose your fees, proceed to checkout, actually takes them to a separate page with just the supplemental data capture information on there. So it, it pulls it out. It kind of would help, like if you have a ton of questions you're asking, um, I could see that being helpful having that extra page in there so it doesn't clutter up your enrollment cart but I, I really do think you know 95 percent of the time put it on the enrollment cart and it um just to save that extra click because you really um yeah any any chance you get for people to hit a back button it's like try to avoid it one one less page for them to go through uh and it's just all right there, especially if you're only asking one or two different things, you know, just put it on the, the enrollment cart and uh, keep it there. So my recommendation ECDC to on uh, is gonna suffice for 95% of you guys. Uh, as far as actually adding and editing fields, there's some rules and kind of just, you know, listen to me now, but later, Go to the help guide, because I think even, even when I do a supplemental data capture page, I go to the help guide and I consult off of it. Either that or, you know, get my slides, download them after the webinar uh, and keep them handy. Um, and you can go back through these rules again. But uh, so, so here's the kind of the convention when you're looking at putting a field on a supplemental data capture page. Uh, you're putting the first three letters is the type of field. So if you're doing a text box, a list, uh, so a drop-down list, 
or a checkbox or radio button. Uh, you're doing TXT, LST, or CHK as the first three letters of the name. Then it's the data type. Character, numeric, date, logical, memo, just the first, first letter of each of those data types. The fifth, so this would be the fifth, is whether you want to have the field required or not. Zero is not required, one is required. So in this example I have up here, it's not required. Um, and I'm not, I don't know, it seems like if you're going through the trouble of trying to ask these questions, I think most of the time you're gonna require it. So put in number one on it. Um, I'm gonna talk about more information about what happens with required fields because there's some special things you've got to set up with the data capture page uh, if you've got an older page especially. Uh, but then the, the remaining characters of your field is the field name. So out of student manager, that field name, uh, you can use off the register screen, RG code, RG status, RG confirm, RG print cert, those fields. Um, those are fine to use on a supplemental data capture. Any name field, any name UDF, any red UDF, you can also use. I'm also going to talk about unlimited UDFs on another slide, but um, yeah, you can do those as well. Okay. Once, um, one thing that's very important with these is make sure your value equals quote, quote, or value equals on with checkboxes or radio buttons. Um, and then with a drop down list, have a value equal something. Uh, value equals small. And that's how you're going to make sure it's got something to start with. However, if you are wanting, like out of a name field or a name UDF, something out of their name record, to pull into the supplemental data capture kind of as a confirmed, maybe you are asking um, your date of birth on your signup page, but you want on the supplemental data capture page on these specific courses that it be required that they fill it out. Maybe it's not required on the signup page. So you can have this oname.odata.nmbirth in the double hashes, put that in the value for the field, and that will pull that out of uh, out of student manager or out of the sign up page if this is a brand new account, pull it out and redisplay it, uh, and then they can change the the data element on the data capture page. Um, one other thing to think about is there's the tab index on the fields. If you are moving things around, make sure you change the tab index. When I what I'm talking about tab index is like when you're in student manager and you're on uh, the name record, you tab from first name goes to the middle initial goes to last name. There's a specific tab order set in student manager. Same thing on a web page. Your tab order should flow down the page. Um, so if they tab from birth date and then there's, or let's say first, middle, and last name, you know, they tab from the first name and they go to the last name and then they go to middle initial, there's some disconnect there, need to reset your uh, tab index values. So uh, if you guys have SQL Server, make sure you have max length set on each of the, the character fields. Because if they try to put in 40 characters into NUDFC1, uh, they're going to get a SQL Server error each and every time, string or binary data too long to fit. And yes, I've seen that way too often. So that's why I have that error practically memorized. So yeah, don't, don't set it longer than what it uh, needs to be. Uh, it it needs to follow the max length rules as uh, as set forth um, in in the help guide. So um, yeah, make sure you set that. Uh, I think I'll, I think the pretty sure that the the uh, 
data capture that you download off of our website has those max max lengths uh, set in there for you for those examples. But yeah, just double check on on the other ones. You don't need max length on checkboxes, radio buttons, um, date fields because those are fixed width. Uh, oh, the text area. So those are your memo as well. Uh, you don't need the, the max length. Oh, you could set a max length on a memo field if you are, you know, you don't want them to be writing novels every single time. Maybe, well, and yeah, just, yeah, you know that their response is going to be under 100 characters. Say so you can set the max length to 100 characters on those, but you do not have to. On the open text fields, on other fields, you have to set the max length. So, okay, requiring fields. I kind of mentioned this before and went off of it, but um, you can, but you can't require checkbox and radio buttons. Radio buttons, absolutely not, because you have to have a, a yes and a no or a, you know, they're going to have multiple things going on and you can't really check to see which one of those is, is the, is actually checked. Um, also with a checkbox, the no option is it's just unchecked and that's considered blank uh, in, in the data world. So if you're wanting them to make sure that they un, you know, they either check or uncheck the box, you can't really check for the unchecked. However, if you've got a checkbox that says, I agree to the terms and conditions, blah, 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 you can require that because you want them to say yes every time to that. So you can require it to to check and make sure that they have check marked the box. Um, doo -doo -doo. The one thing also there's this rec checks hidden field that's on the data capture page that you download from our website. It may or may not be on your copy of data capture.htm in your uh, ACE web might double check and make sure that it is there if you are requiring fields. Um, and then you make sure to put into the value field which which data elements. So here we got uh, reg, un, uh, reg user defined logic one and reg user defined logic two, both being required in this example. So comma separate the fields and put them in here uh, of what you're wanting to require. Um, drop down lists. Uh, one thing about it is, so if you are going to require, make the first option, like have it say select t-shirt size and have that first value be blank. And that way it forces them to select small, medium, or large from the drop down, or you know, however many different sizes you've got of t-shirt that you want them to select. Uh, they have to choose one of these other options. They have to choose a non-blink option if you're wanting to require it. Also, another consideration: if you've got numerics that you're trying to capture, make sure you don't want the uh, value of zero because zero is considered blank. So that's, uh, it won't let them pass if they just put in zero. They need to put in one, negative one, whatever uh, numeric uh, that is non-zero uh, to actually get past the uh, requisite. Uh, requiring fields. Um, So this is, uh, oh, what I was showing before, this is uh, with using ECDC on, this is with uh, ECDC off, I think. 
Um, no, what is it? Validation required class. So this is, oh, class equals required needs to be put in to the, the input tag when you're, when you're using the ECDC option. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so add that to the tag and, um, oh, also you do need a, a updated copy of X enroll card.htm if your technician has been keeping you up to date and keeping your templates up to date, then you've probably already have it. Uh, this has been years since we've added this this class equals required to the to the system. So um, you guys probably should have it, but just um, ask your ask your technician if you uh, need to have need to double check to make sure that you've got it. Uh, and that would be in the case that you have uh, updated your enrollment card and then in subsequent updates have asked to not get it updated because that would ruin your uh, customizations. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, just need to make sure to have that stuff enabled. Appending data. So this would be like if you've got uh, name comments uh, and you're trying to get, uh, well, you can add to name comments uh, uh, without overwriting what's already there. Um, really, one of the things we've talked to, or this example is it's asking two questions and getting the answer for the the two different um questions and putting them both in uh name comments um so what it does is is really puts the answer to the first one puts a couple line breaks after it and puts in the new answer so this would be so maybe you, they've done answer one answer two and then next year they come back and do the same summer camp and now they need to answer one and answer two again. Well, now there'll be really answer three, answer four coming down further in the uh, comments area. Uh, so you can just keep appending um, uh, as many times as you need to. Um, and really the, so the one difference instead of just the name NMCOM after the, the first portion, the first five characters, there's this uh, extra word of append in there. Unlimited UDFs. Yes, it's possible to put unlimited UDFs on a data capture form. Uh, it does only work with the ECDC equals on. Another reason why I re highly recommend always using that setting. Um, if you need to require a field, there are there's there's some JavaScript that needs to be added, um, and I think that's already on the newer. Um, that's already well. I can't remember if it's on the X and roll card or if it's on the the data capture .htm, but either way, uh, if you if you've already got the latest, then it's already there. Um, so this has. Uh, when you're building the field names for a unlimited UDF, you do the the prefix like before, followed by the in UDFU or R UDFU, depending on if you want name unlimited or registration unlimited, and then followed by another uh, underscore or followed by an underscore and then the uh, field name. So text, R-U-D-F-U, underscore, dance, underscore, partner. So dance, underscore, partner is what you've called the field in Student Manager. Uh, or if you're getting dance partner put on the registration, or uh, wait, this is the registration. Oh, I was going to mention, if you are doing dance partner or something like that, um, another thing you could think about doing is the partner enrollment package. Uh, 
see your technician if you don't know what that is or uh, go out to our our um, uh, ace web demo and play around with it because that's really powerful to get partners registered uh and 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 enrolled in your uh, you know in courses that require partnership uh so like dance courses but anyway i, I digress uh, name records is kind of the same thing, except you can also pull the data out. So if you've got a fun underscore code, whatever fun underscore code is, uh, you can pull that out with this o name dot o u u data dot and then the the name of the field. Uh, that so if the, They've done a data capture page in the past and they filled in the fun code. It would pull it back out and show them on the supplemental data capture page and they could change it if they need to change it or um, um, be like, oh, I've already submitted that in the past. You guys already have it. Yes, confirm it's the, still the same. Uh, if you have it being a drop down, you can have the HTML generated to do the drop down for you. Uh, and that's this session dot get session var, and then you do the the name UDF drop or or reg UDF drop followed by an underscore, and then the name of the the field. So in this example, movie genres, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, uh, that would show then a drop down list for you to pull, or for for the student to then pull and uh, select from those. And then, so those would be defined in um, in uh, the code main area in student manager. So when you're defining, ah, where did I go? Hit a button. Uh, so when you're defining your unlimited UDFs, there's that drop down code and you double click and you go in and put the different movie genres or whatever you're you're doing the different choices for uh you can do that there so uh one example i've seen with unlimited udfs that i think and i think more and more state institutions are are uh, going this direction is with ethnicity being able to choose multiple ethnicities so they set up different unlimited udf check boxes and then, so then you can go in and select, I'm part Native American, part um, Latino, whatever, you know, uh, whatever they need to check uh, as their multiple ethnicities, uh, they can do that. So um, um, yeah, and that's based on state reporting requirements. Um, and I've seen, already have seen that and I think more and more states are going to go that way so questions very very good Matt um, a lot of these <clears throat> I think see a lot of you out there that run youth programs and so I've seen many that use this when you have to capture what allergies and um, guardians and different people they can call this the supplemental data mm -hmm. capture for when you have to capture above and beyond what you can already get in manager this is this is what you use for that um, we have a few questions here first of all as I mentioned youth programs and oh there's waivers and everything more and more Matthew people are needing signatures and so Maxie's asking mm -hmm. if you have ideas of signature capture at this time or is this something we need to kind of revisit internally on like no PDFs? yeah go ahead um so yeah i do that all the time especially with um uh oh let me go back here um no no where's the example um uh but it's like that I agree to the terms and conditions and then right below it have a signature box. But yeah, you just, you would put that into a um, supplemental data capture page or, or not a supplement. You'd put that into a registration uh, UDF 
or an unlimited UDF, either way, uh, so that whatever they type in, it goes in into this. Now, if you're wanting like the, you know, the scribble box, um, I don't think we can do that. I mean, we, we no, yeah, we don't have that capability for the, the scribble box for them to do that. But uh, if retyping their name would suffice for you guys as far as capturing a signature, uh, yeah, just set up a, a UDF of some sort to capture that. Okay. Um, they're asking about supplemental data, including document file upload. Oh. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of, I just realized that one thing I'm lacking in my presentation is the attachments. Um, and and it's kind of a whole nother wicket or kind of, yeah, it's another thing you can do with subtle supplemental data capture pages is do the, there's what's called attachments.awp. And what it is, is so you link out to another page uh, where they do, they it can be one document, it could be multiple documents, but they're uploading a document, and that goes into the name docs area of student manager. Um, uh, but so yeah, that can be done. Um, consult the help guide. Consult your technician uh, if you need uh, more information on that. Um, yeah, we can get it done. Okay. And I should also mention to everybody that in um, students' accounts, in their ACEWEB accounts, there is a place for document upload within their profile mm -hmm. as well. So that's something you might want to look at. And Jason, I'll direct you to that um, if that's of interest as well. But if you look in our sandbox, the ACEWEB sandbox, and you have a profile set up, you can see there's a big button for document uploads there too. Um, you can also require document uploads at the time of registration. So they can't finish their registration without uploading a certain document can do. And a special thank you, Karen and Matthew for making that introduction to those options that you have in your system. And we appreciate everybody attending today and have a great upcoming weekend. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye. Bye.